One of my most popular videos is the one that I published about fantasy selves. All the different fantasy selves that I have that I had to work through and figure out, is this the fantasy me? Is this the real me? Because all the, the fantasies were taking up so much space and time in my life that I wasn't able to be the, the real me. I recently took that video and transcribed it and published it as a blog post. And last week, Tova commented on there and said, I feel like this was written to me, the fabric, the baking tools, all of it is the possibility of all the versions of me that could be, but they can't coexist and I don't have room for all of them. This has been really impactful. Thank you. I love that she used the word coexist because that's exactly what it is. All the different versions of ourselves, no matter how possible they are, can't coexist at the same time. The homesteader who provides for her entire neighborhood. The quilter who teaches classes out of her home. The homeschooler that has six hours of lessons planned, planned out every single day well in advance. The sculptor who is always willing to demonstrate art at the downtown art walks. Each one of those is possible, but all four together there's just simply not enough room or time in our lives to do all of that. I remember hearing a quote from Madeleine Albright. I do think women can have it all, but not all at the same time. Our life comes in segments, and we have to understand that we can have it all if we're not trying to do it all at once. And there is so much truth to that, especially as a parent, because when we're in the middle of pregnancies, infants, toddlers, all of that, there is very little time for anything else in our lives. And then the kids grow and go to school or we shift to homeschooling and the responsibilities change, the time management changes. We have a little bit more time to work with because of their independence. And that continues as our children grow. Each season of our life requires a little bit different time and energy. And when we're in the middle of one season, we don't have time for specific things in our lives. When I was younger, when I was around 20, early 20s, I really felt this. I did want to have it all. I felt very capable of everything. I learned how to change my oil and fix faucets. I did things for myself. <laughs> All while I was in the middle of birthing kids, being in the choir, practicing, being on call as a doula, cooking from scratch, I had a lot of things going on. And that bar that I set for myself was just unbearably high. And now after embracing minimalism, I can confidently say that I no longer want that. I no longer want it all. And I definitely don't want it all at the same time. <laughs> I had to take a good hard look at myself and decide what it is I truly wanted out of this life. For me, I don't want to be a politician. I don't want to be a CEO of a major organization. I don't want to be well known. I have if this if my business grows, it's because it grows organically because people people relate to what's going on in my life. It's not because I'm pushing and striving and like making it go forward because I want to grow and grow and grow and grow my business. Sure, I want to gain followers and reach more people, but the whole idea of being an influencer and being famous has lost its appeal. So what do I want? I want to enjoy my time. I want to be able to sit in quiet contentment. I want to know my children's personalities. I want to know what their interests are. I want them to feel comfortable coming and talking to me. And I want to feel like I have time that I can do that, that I can devote time to listening to them and talking with them. I want to be able to reminisce with my husband when we're in our 80s and say, I'm so thankful for what we shared. I don't want to look back on all the things that I accomplished that probably mean nothing anymore. I just want to be present, live my life with the people around me. Jen left this comment on the same blog post. So true. I had never had a label for it, but as I approach 50, there are a lot of paths that I can no longer choose, and hence a lot of me 
won't be. And that's okay. A little sad, even a little painful, but the truth and letting go of the fantasy me will leave more room for the right now me, I'm sure. I'm sure that a lot of this desire for me to, to the shift from wanting it all to wanting to be content and be present in my life has a lot to do with me being older, having grandkids, and having parents that are getting older now, and I can see how fleeting life is. I long to have strong relationships with my loved ones, with my children, with my grandchildren, and that takes so much more time than I ever thought it would. If I realized that back in the beginning of how much time it would take to keep a relationship with six children and their spouses and their kids, I probably would have rethought how many kids I had. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, my maternal grandmother did so well at being present, being available, and doing things with her kids. So I have that example to look at. And I know that's what I want. That's how I want to be remembered when my children and my grandchildren think of me. But this doesn't come naturally for me. I have to set reminders on my phone to call my kids, to FaceTime my grandkids. I've had to build it into my routine, otherwise months will go by and I'll just be caught up in daily life and forget to take time out for these things that I really do want. It also takes work in me. Like I can't just go and talk to them all about me. I have to think of questions that I can ask to, to draw them out, to get them to talk and share things about their lives so I can get a better understanding of where they're at. I've had a lot of people tell me, oh, Rachel, you're so good at staying connected and getting your children involved in, in daily life. And, and it's not at all true. It's, it's actually very challenging for me. It does not come easy. And if I'm not careful about how I view it and what's going on in my mind, I can find myself resenting the time that I need to give to other people. I can find myself resenting the time that it takes to maintain these relationships. So I'm constantly having to work on the way I think about it and remind myself of what I truly want. Because I've decided that being present in my relationships and being content in my life are my priorities, it helped me release a lot of the things that I had been holding on to. A lot of the things that, that were preventing me from being content and preventing me from being present in my relationships. I simply don't have enough time to do all the quilting, sew all my children's clothes, be a professional baker, start a restaurant, have an urban homestead, and then also have time for my six children, grandchildren, aging parents, church family, and all the various other relationships around me, and still have moments where I can sit down quietly and enjoy my life. As Tova said, these things can't coexist. We just don't have the time to do all of these things, and we don't have the physical space to have all the supplies needed for all these different things. Embracing minimalism is not at all like we're on a strict diet and we say like, oh, well, I'm a minimalist, so I can't have any fun, I can't have anything that I, like, I enjoy. It's not like that. Embracing minimalism instead means to be taking a look at ourselves, what we want out of our life, and then releasing all the things that don't help us do that, that don't help us live that way, that don't help us accomplish the things that we want to. And it's perfectly okay if our accomplishments are in relationships and everyday life rather than physical things that we can see. For me, I chose to let go of so many of those different things so that I could be a present wife, parent, grandparent, daughter that I wanted to be. So when you think about your own life and all this stuff that you have in your home that supports all these different variations of you, is that stuff helping you with your ultimate priorities? I have to just put in a little side note, end note here, I guess. Um, because I kind of, I feel like saying all of this makes it sound like I gave up like all of me like in martyrdom so that I could serve other people. And that's not at all the case. I have kept so many things in my life. I, 
I love to bake, I love to cook, I love to garden, I love to read and paint, and all these things I do do. The things that I gave up were superfluous. They did not add value to my life. They, they took it away. Instead, they were things that, that would sit in my basement. And when I go into the basement, I think, oh, gosh, yeah, I still need to do that. I still need to take care of that. Like, oh, so much stuff. So instead of completing them and doing them, I got rid of them. I got them out of my life and then I can breathe and I can just focus on the things that I really want to do right now. Embracing minimalism has allowed me to be honest with myself and accept what I'm capable of doing and let go of everything else so that I can really live in the moment. And my life is so full it's full enough. I do not need to add any more to it. And if you haven't watched the Fantasy Self video, or you need a reminder of all of the things that I had to work through before I could really find freedom in my life, you can check that video out right here. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you later.